Welcome to the Retail Tech Podcast, where we talk about the full spectrum of technologies and implementation used in omnichannel and online retail. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at retailtechpodcast.com, and we always look forward to your feedback. Today, I'm speaking with Tim Falls, Vice President of Community at the company called Keen. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm very well. How are you Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm doing great. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. So um, what is Keen? So Keen IO is a platform for data analytics. Um, It's basically a set of APIs that software developers can use to uh, programmatically consume and store data. Um, and once they've stored that data in uh, in the cloud with Keen, then they can use a separate API or a web interface to uh, run analysis on that data and ask questions of of that data uh, to get whatever answers they want. And once they've retrieved those answers through that analysis, they can u- then use um, a, another API that we provide for visualization of those results. So it's kind of a three-part platform that allows companies to uh, better collect, analyze, and visualize the data that they are that they're interested in um, around their customer usage or their own usage of their software or their products. Okay, so which customer technologies do you actually connect with? Um, it can really be anything connected to the internet. Um, so anything from just a plain old website, you know, uh, a storefront, for example, in an e-commerce uh, e-commerce setting, um, where you're just measuring traffic, like who's coming uh, to your website, who's um, clicking on different things, who's making purchases. Um, And then beyond that, you know, it might be a mobile application. So if you have a mobile application uh, that's sometimes connected to the Internet when your device is uh, in range and sometimes not, then you might want to be measuring usage patterns of your of that application, both when the device is online and offline. And, um, you know, obviously only sending data too keen when the offline is, uh, status is present, but then also storing that data on the device locally when you're offline and then sending it over when you're back online. So that's web, that's mobile, and then a third big category would be um, IoT devices. So anything Internet of Things, um, devices, physical things that are connected to the Internet and sending data. So in the retail space, a lot of times that's, uh, that's involving beacons. Um, retailers might s- install these small beacon devices within their uh, within their store, and those beacons can pick up on when other smart devices, like like a cell phone, is passing by it. So they can see where our customers use um, maneuvering throughout their throughout their store, and uh, where is the foot traffic and stuff like that. Kind of like the web traffic for a website, but in a physical sense. Right. So um, so those are kind of the three big. Uh, technology use cases in terms of connecting to Keen to um, store and analyze and visualize all the data. So you basically get the feed from the customers, let's say email marketing program or their CMS or their, you know, their different systems. The data is basically going into the Keen system and then you do your analytics and organization, organize the information in a format that so this is like, because everybody is talking about big data, of course. Big data is the new thing, and right. the big question on big data is, how do I actually implement it? How do I use it? So right. I see a, a few of the companies that I've talked to <clears throat> that do analytics. It's sort of like you're outsourcing the actual big data processing part of the organization so so you don't have to worry about that yourself you just capture the data and your partner is going to help you make sense of it yeah that's a really good um good summary of it so when it when it comes to big data uh which is this buzzword we hear a lot uh, the big challenge associated with big data is the big part of it right um when you have this massive amount amount of data 
uh, it's pretty easy to store that because cloud com- cloud storage has uh, become quite a commodity these days. So storing that data on a on a server in the cloud somewhere so that you don't have to have your own server farm in your office or whatever um, is relatively easy. But when it comes to processing and running analysis on huge, huge data sets, billions and billions of data points, that's when it becomes really, really challenging from an engineering standpoint. Uh, so companies who want to focus on selling products on, in their store, but not focus on being experts in data analytics, they would go to a company like Keen so say, hey, we're generating all this data. We know the questions we want to ask um, of that data. We know the answers that we want to derive from those questions, but we just don't know how to ask those questions or get those answers. And we help, help them do that. So uh, we are the experts in once we've stored all that data, running that really difficult analysis and doing that in a timely manner, an efficient manner, and a cost-effective manner. Um, so companies these days want to take advantage of all the all the things that can come from big data, but they don't want to be a big data company. They want to stay focused on what they do best, which is, in some cases, selling products online or selling products in a store. Um, so that's, yeah. That's kind of the summary of, of how it how okay. this is affecting people. Yeah, so I think it, it makes total sense because, I mean, big data scientists or su- data scientists are probably the hardest uh, recruiting job and the most expensive these days anyway. And you can't just like build a big data practice with one person. You have to build a whole team, then you have to manage the whole team, you have to keep them. So it's very expensive, and it's I think it's a, really a, a no-brainer to find a good partner that's going to handle that part for you instead yeah. of investing in all. Even, I mean, really, regardless of how large you are, mm-hmm. it's not easy to do it. Yeah, and I think that companies like Keen can really, as you alluded to, um, serve as a complement to on-staff employees, you know, in-house resources. So... Um, if you can manage to find one data scientist or one engineer, who a data engineer, um, at least one person on your team who can kind of uh, take the lead on um, understanding what the company needs from a data perspective, then you partner with a company like Keen who can uh, provide all the resources around that internal person to really allow them to be effective in their role. Okay, so talking about the actual a project, for example, that you would work with a customer, what exact services does Keen provide to the customer? I mean, from, of course, there's initial discussions about what do you need and how do we do that? But then, you know, the relationship continues after the, you know, the technology is implemented. Yeah, absolutely. So um, about a year ago, Keen started... A, uh, offering a new product line called Keen Pro. And up to that point, we only had um, what is now called Keen Developer or Keen Self Service, uh, which was basically you know, your typical software as a service business model where uh, anyone could find our website, uh, sign up for free, and start using our product and put a credit card down whenever they got above the free tier. Uh, what we found was that a lot of companies, because this data problem is is really foreign to a lot of people, they need more than just a set of online documentation and some uh, GitHub repos and stuff like that. They need real hands-on assistance. So we introduced Keen Pro uh, last summer, and we've been we've seen a lot of success with it, and um, and it kind of gets to what you were talking about where you need more support than just a set of tools. So in that relationship, we work with customers, you know, before they've signed a contract, before they've committed, we help, uh, help them understand their problems, understand our solution and how it might meet those or satisfy those problems. And we develop a proof of concept with them, uh, with a solutions architect and a salesperson and other folks, you know, our on in staff, um, on staff data scientists to really set the stage and get a firm understanding of what the customer is looking for. 
and really make sure that our product is going to work for them. And if we say, yes, this is a good product fit, then we go into that proof of concept and uh, really proving out how it could work and what it would cost and uh, how the ongoing relationship would be maintained. And typically that looks like um, once they've signed up and said, all right, we're ready to do this, they work with, they, they get an account manager who's dedicated to them as well, along with that solutions architect and uh, and sales rep representative and uh, we sign typically 12 month contracts for that and so throughout those 12 months our customers have direct access to um, our account managers and our technical support team and we do quarterly reviews of their business needs and if there are any kind of new things that we need to do in terms of integrations to meet uh, emerging problems that they're, that they're that are surfacing as time goes on and really just constantly evaluating and reevaluating what they're trying to do and and how keen can help serve those needs um, and we've seen a lot of success with that um, because that way we get to really work closely with customers and understand their problems and uh, do everything that needs to be done to efficiently meet those problems. Um, in the past, with that more self-service model, what we saw was people weren't using the platform in the right ways and uh, it was really putting undue stress on our, on our infrastructure, which caused problems for other customers. Um, so that's, a, that's an issue that the service provider on our side, we have to manage well um, to make sure we coach our customers into using the platform in the right way so that all customers get, get a great experience um, that's through their usage. That's very interesting. Yeah, because you know, as, as customers, we don't typically think about how is our usage of this tool impacting the uh, our partner, you know, our, our service provider, and you know, with with hosted web-based applications, everything has an impact. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting. That yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and if we're doing our job well, our customers don't ever have to think about that, right? Um, so that's our goal: is to make sure that we're providing the support to our customers so that they don't have to worry about whether they're affecting other customers. Um, they're always, you know in line with, uh, we're always in alignment in terms of uh, what they need and how they can get what they need. Okay. So do you actually host like personally identifiable information from customers, customers on your system? Um, we, we store anything that our customers want us to store. Um, but we also make our data f like free, like uh, the data that we store is not our data. It's our customers' data. So we don't access that data. We don't run analysis of our own on that data. But our customers can store anything that they want. Um, but at, at the same time, when we're, um, as part of our service to our customers, we coach them into best practices around that stuff so that they can ensure privacy and uh, security um, measures are being met for their customers. So w with the with the view and the perspective of our thousands of customers and how they handle different, uh, especially sensitive information around their customers, we can, we've really developed a lot of best practices um, to coach our customers into, hey, here's how you should store sensitive information about your customers and here's how you can basically store as little um, specific personal identif identifiable information as possible and still get the value out of uh, out of your data analysis that you want right so right. Uh, that's one of the big rules of thumbs is just like anonymize things as much as possible because really when you're looking at big data it's not so much that you want to know exactly what one in particular customer did it's that you want to know trends and you want to know uh, what is the aggregate activity happening so that you can make informed decisions right yeah, in general, you know, as as a founder myself, uh, the the least amount of you know sensitive information you store on your own systems, the better. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that gives you peace of mind as well as your customers if you can say, hey we're not storing that or we're recording it as anonymous stuff so that we are not linking that piece of activity to you as a customer or as a person. 
Right. So which is the reason I was asking about the PII is that if you do store that kind of information in your systems, which sounds like you would store anything that the customer would send to you, then there is a, there is a big security aspect of your systems. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're basically being uh, the silo for the customer's data. So you have to make sure that you don't get hacked and Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and and the way the internet works these days is that actually that responsibility is shared between us and our service providers so we as keen io do not have a a a server farm anywhere we don't have uh, our own physical servers that we that we own and maintain we pay right now we pay pay a company called Softlayer for all our hosting provide provision needs. Um, so Softlayer is a company that was actually purchased by IBM um, several years ago. And, uh, you know, they've been around for over a decade now. They serve companies all over the world. And just as our customers depend on Keen to be the experts in data and analytics, we pay software to be the experts in hosting and security around the information that is stored on on the servers that that we pay them for access to. So um, we're actually our engineering team is actually in the midst of um, making a at least a partial migration of some of our infrastructure over to AWS. Um, so we're not uh, we're not leaving software all altogether, but we're creating redundancy. Um, of our infrastructure by also hosting uh, with AWS. And just like we do with software, you know, Amazon is obviously a a huge company and, you know, thousands and thousands of, probably tens of thousands of of companies around the world depend on them just like we do. uh, And we will, I should say, uh, to have all the security measures in place so that uh, our customers can trust us to trust Amazon and software. (laughs) Right. Uh, So, but I think that's really important for the average consumer to understand, right? How the internet works today, this is how it works, right? There's layers and layers of service providers and tools and APIs and technologies on top of each other uh, that create a pretty, uh, you know, on the surface, it seems simple, but when you dig down, there's, there's lots of, there's lots to it and there's a lot of dependencies and we as consumers are trusting, uh, several different layers of companies with our data and our information, uh, which is, you know, important to know as a consumer. Consumers, they don't even want to think about how this actually stuff works. They just want to use it. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And there, there's certainly a spectrum as to, uh, the various levels of interest amongst consumers in uh, and knowing exactly what's happening behind the scenes and uh, at one end of that spectrum and then the other being like I don't want to know anything just <laughs> just Make let me use the work. internet yeah <laughs> <laughs> let me buy stuff and let me surf the web and whatever <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah so let's talk about uh, maybe one of the examples on on a retailer that is sure. using Keen. Yeah, um, well, I think kind of the the most interesting one gets to that physical retail space. Um, You know, we have, obviously, when you talk about retail, you have the traditional brick-and-mortar locations that we all are used to, um, but also you have your your internet, uh, e-commerce, online-only retail stores, which obviously we're we're getting more and more used to. Um, But I think that the interesting intersection is when those two come together right um and so with that beacon technology mentioned earlier we can combine the physical world and the digital world and get real insights into um physical interactions between a store and its customers in the same way or a very similar way that you can um online that starts to really level up brick and mortar retailers that have suffered from online competition, you know? Uh, so one of our customers is called alert tech and, uh, what they do is they work with apparel retailers, um, folks who are selling clothing and whatnot. And they have a piece of technology that basically is installed within the store and in particular within the fitting rooms of an apparel store. So, um, when a store clerk takes a customer to a fitting room to try on their clothes that they're considering buying, 
they, you know, just as always, they unlock the door and they let them in, but they inform them at that time that this system alert text uh, technology is installed in there and is there's a button so that you can call a serv- uh, call a, uh, uh, someone from the store to come, you know, bring you a different size or look at the clothes you're trying on and give you some feedback. Um, and through the interactions, you know, the the door itself to the fitting room is is internet connected so you know if a customer goes to that door and tries to open the open the handle but it's locked mm-hmm. um, that can send a, an alert to a clerk that says hey someone's trying to get into a, a fitting room go help them um, and once they're in the fitting room and they you know need some assistance they can click that button and a clerk comes and they don't have to guess as to which whether or not they want help or not um and all of those interactions that locked door that push of a button i need some help and all the other things that happen there are all is all stored um again it's sent that data uh, that device is connected to the internet, and that data is sent to Keen, and we store it. And then uh, Alert Tech and their customers can run analysis and see a dashboard that says, "Hey, here's how many people came into our fitting rooms today. Here's how many people wanted assistance. Here's how many." And they can tie that to their point of sale um, data that says, "Okay, now we know how many how, the activity within our fitting room, and we know our sales data, like how many people are actually going from that fitting room and going and purchasing something." So you have a lot more intelligence around, in that case, um, how your customers are behaving, you know, po- or pre-sale uh, within a physical space, which just hasn't been possible in the past, which I think is pretty pretty awesome. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the the fitting room technology sector is kind of uh, making some interesting innovations. You know, there are m- mirrors now that they install in fitting rooms that can actually act as almost like an interface where the customer can actually see different products. They can add things to the cart. So there, that's that's very interesting. I, I you know I hadn't heard about Alert Tech, but, but what they're doing sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's really neat. Uh, I was just looking at their website to kind of refresh my memory on them. They signed up as a Keen Pro customer um, within the last year or so, and um, you know they have, I think, over a hundred thousand sensors uh, installed in stores all over the the world, and they're working with brands like Calvin Klein and Nike, and um, it's really neat. And I think actually, I I don't know the full extent of their technology and stuff. Cause, um, you know, I asked ab- about this from some of our sales team and marketing team members, uh, about the use case. And, uh, but they uh, actually, now that you mentioned mirrors, they, they said something about mirror interaction as well. So there, there could even, I think there was a way to maybe uh, like full body selfie and have like, uh, you know, be able to send that to yourself so you can, have a have an email with an image that shows you in the thing that you're trying on in case you want to buy it at a later date. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, so this is very interesting. The uh, what about you? Also mentioned something about Net-a-Porter. Oh yeah, it's um, it's actually uh, that's how I pronounced it first too, but it's pronounced very sophisticatedly Net-a-Porter. Oh, Net-a-Porter. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't mean to call you out because I, I said the exact no, same I'm thing. I'm glad you it's told our, me because that's our American uh, version of a net a porter is, our, yeah, is the no. American version of net a porte. Okay. <laughs> so um, earlier this mar this year in March, I uh, was over in London and I met with net a porte because they had just signed on as a as a Keen Pro customer as well and. I had never heard of them, but come to find out, they're one of the largest online retailers in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, They, I went to their office in a huge Westfield mall uh, out in West London, and their offices were enormous. And the team that I met with was actually three different teams from within their company, and and uh, only one of those teams was currently using Keen, but the two others were in the meeting to learn how that team was using Keen and how they might be able to use our technology in addition to that. So, um, you know, they are obviously just an online retailer, and they have millions and millions of visitors every day, and they sell lots and lots of products through that. Um, they actually have a, a kind of a brother product or platform, if you will, called uh, Mr. Porte, I think, um, for men, because Net-A-Porte is mostly women apparel. And um, 
so the use cases there are, are really widely varied. Uh, the, the use case that I saw in action was actually the engineering team at Netaporte was using Keen to um, to analyze their website's performance from an engineering standpoint. So, you know, with a web store, you're constantly updating the layout and the products and, you know, deploying new versions of the, of the website, the, both the marketing side and the actual storefront, um, you know, at, at, at different times, whether that be weekly or monthly, uh, but it's pretty often. And when you do a new deploy of a, a new version of a website, for example, an engineering team wants to know that that new code is working, right? And that the experience on the customer side is up to par. So uh, things that they're measuring are uh, page load time to make sure that when a customer lands on the page that all the images are, are popping up in a timely manner so that they get a good experience. Um, it's also, um, you know, things like refresh rate and uh different, um, any, any kind of performance metrics that an engineering team would want to know to make sure that the website's performing well. Um, so that was the, the original kind of use case for them. But then the teams that are doing marketing, for example, that are sending newsletters out to promote and bring people to the website, they saw a really good use case for Keen where they could do analytics on the uh, on the opens and the clicks and the unsubscribes of their email newsletters. Mm -hmm. And the storefront itself saw a lot of potential in just doing a lot more user behavior tracking where they're seeing like time on site and uh, time that people have items in their basket, uh, in their shopping cart, right. uh, abandoned shopping carts, and how many, how many items are in an abandoned shopping cart so that they can, um, know that have that information, but also act on that information to, uh, hopefully increase sales and save lost sales. Right. Okay. Um, now there is an aspect of, uh, every data, data company, uh, related to AI. Um, so what kind of, uh, does Keen use any kind of like AI, uh, technologies in your, in your system? Um, you know, so artificial intelligence is, uh, yet another big word like big data that we hear a lot about and, um, can be kind of scary to certain people. I think within, I think in the da big data space, the particular subset of, of artificial intelligence that is most, most highly relevant is machine learning and machine learning is basically a fancy word for algorithms that teach themselves as they consume, as they run. Right. So an algorithm is, uh, is running to, uh, determine like, what ad should we serve to this visitor based on their past purchase behavior or their past, uh, you know, behavior in terms of where they're looking on the site or what they've clicked or what they've put in their shopping cart. Um, and so basically machine learning can look at a, at a person and run their activities through this algorithm and develop a better, more accurate profile of that person so that they can better serve that person in the future. And, and therefore you're learning more and more about a particular person or a particular demographic or a particular, uh, customer segment, uh, in a more aggregate view so that you can create a more personalized experience for those, for those individuals or for those groups. Um, yeah. so that's kind of just a, a a basic my understanding overview of where artificial intelligence and machine learning fall into uh, data analytics in the retail space um, and keen itself we um, honestly we don't focus on that very much right now like we because we want our customers our position is that we want to enable our customers to do anything they want um, with their data and really, like on the machine learning side of things, that's not what Keen specializes in. We're more just focused on that collection analysis and visualization. We don't try to prescribe 
like um, how customers should use their data. We listen to what they want, the results that they want, and then we help them match our technology to that. So if, uh, if a retailer was to want to implement more machine learning on their side, we would probably say, hey, we know this other technology that specializes in machine learning, and here's how it can interact with Keen to meet the needs that you have. Um, I just had breakfast uh, with a couple of entrepreneurs earlier this week, or shoot, no, it was late last week, um, and they have a, a company called Monkey Learn, and it is a machine learning product. And they went through 500 startups. They're based in Uruguay, actually. But uh, you know, I've learned a lot from them around machine learning and artificial intelligence recently. Um, just because, obviously, there is this uh, important and relevant relationship between what we're doing and artificial intelligence and machine learning and how Keen will evolve into the future. Um, but Right now, we're, we don't have any of that really built into our um, our customers' experience. Um, okay. On the other hand, our engineering team obviously is fully aware of these these other tools like Monkey Learn and uh, other machine learning pro- projects and products out there. So that um, you know, as we plan our future product offering, I'm sure that will come into play more and more. Um, but today, that's not really a, a big focus or a big offering that we that we're marketing to our customers. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a buzzword, AI and machine learning, um, and there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of gray area between what these, you know, the, the, the two ends of this spectrum where it's supposedly you're not using any machine learning as where you're actually using a very intelligent one, uh, something that could be probably like on the level of IBM Watson, for example, mm-hmm. things like that. So. Yeah. There is a lot of gray area between these two ends and yeah. the biggest challenge for people is that you know they, they hear the word and they don't know what am I supposed to do with it. Am I right. you know like as a customer. So <laughs> it's good that yeah. you are actually working with these specialized tool companies that can actually add that that intelligence almost on mm-hmm. top of the the data to yeah. help customers. Yeah, and it's interesting. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned IBM Watson because um, we actually just had a press release come out yesterday um, that announced our involvement in the Watson Partner Program. Uh, so, within the Watson ecosystem, Keen IO, uh, along with I think a total of 20 um, launch partners, which are all in the data analytics product space. Um, you know, we're partnering up with Watson to play our part in that ecosystem, basically. And our part right now is in the ingestion stage or the uh, collection okay. and storage okay. stage. Um, okay. So um, then you get into other things like enrichment, right? So machine learning would really contribute to the enrichment of data where you're uh, running your data through these algorithms and gaining more insight uh, through that usage and then uh, adding additional information or additional data points to, uh, let's say, a profile that you already have an idea about. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's right. a, a really interesting and really burgeoning space that uh, we'll hear more and more about. And, but we're pretty excited to be to be involved with what uh, IBM and, and their Watson program are, are, are embarking upon. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff as we saw and pretty exciting from a futuristic standpoint uh, with like Watson being able to beat Ken Jennings and Jeopardy and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely exciting to see these things happening. I think it's really, we're almost at the beginning. I mean, there's a lot of work already done, but we're almost at the beginning of what the combina- combination of all these different specialty technologies can actually bring to a retailer Mm -hmm. so to help them so now um, one more thing I want to ask you about so you're in charge of community Mm -hmm. Um, what exactly does that mean and why is that important to your customers so community is what does it mean? It's basically a part of the business strategy that is focused on human relationships. So 
at Keen.io, we have four teams that make up the entire company. And those four teams are engineering, growth, people, and community. So engineering is pretty obvious. They're building the product, creating the product roadmap. Uh, growth is everything from sales to marketing to sales engineering to solutions architecting to customer success and support. And then community, or sorry, people is encompasses not only the traditional HR functions, but also our people development program, which is focused on empowering our employees to grow as individuals and really self-actualize and meet their personal goals, both personally, like in their personal life and their work life. Um, so I kind of view the people team as the team that's focused on making sure that Keen is a very human centric company internally. And then the community team is really the outward extension of that. So we're the team that goes out and, and creates interactions and engagements with other humans in the world and shows them through those interactions that Keen is a very human centric company, that we are good people. Uh, we, we convey our companies and our people's values and morals and principles and uh, intentions, and we represent the brand, and we build relationships with people through these interactions out in the real world on the ground as well as online in the digital world. And the intention of, of building those relationships is so that other people can understand who we are as a company, right? And whether or not our technology is relevant to them is really um, not the central focus. If we happen to build this relationship and the outcome of that relationship is that they sign up for, as a customer or they become a partner or they um, decide to invest in our next venture round or they uh, you know, continue to build a relationship to the point where they actually become an employee. Uh, those are all possible outcomes, or maybe none of those outcomes happen, and we just have a new friend, right? And that's just as valuable as any of those other things from a community standpoint. Um, so it's really, it's brand building, it's relationship building, it's it's being out in the world as uh, as a set of humans who are interested in working with other like-minded people. And, and not so like-minded people so that we can learn from other people. And, um, and it's a, it's a position that I have held here at Keen and as well at my last company, SendGrid. Um, and those are two companies through their culture, their cultural, um, values and decisions have, have invested in this thing called community, which is not existent at every company in the world today. But I think 10 years from now, it will be just as common as a sales team is um, because it's becoming more and more uh, important, more and more recognized. And I think it's a, it's a representation of the way a modern business must operate in order to succeed. Um, you know, right. the, the, the businesses of the past that were born from the industrial revolution have been more focused on profit and creating as many widgets as possible and, uh, high efficiency and high productivity often at the cost of the happiness and health of their employees. Um, and that's, we believe not the right way to do business. We think that if you focus on your employees and the people first, and then you focus on your customers as people as well, uh, you're going to have better outcomes than if you just focus on profit and product productivity. Yeah, I I mean definitely I think there is there you know in the markets and if you talk to the people that only are interested in numbers they they would think that these things probably don't matter as much but you know we even have like more hard data like recently uh Walmart reported that their sales went up because they started paying their people more. So that mm -hmm. may sound counterintuitive but it actually you know, a happy employee, a happy customer is going to bring you a lot more value in ways you can't even imagine, in ways you can't, like, you know, put in a formula, a financial formula. Yep. So Exactly. And that's, and that's the, the interesting challenge to it all, right, is where we say that this community thing works, it's good for the business, but a lot of what 
a lot of the activity that happens within a community strategy is in-person act- interactions and stuff, which, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is a lot harder to track and to measure and to uh, draw a line between, hey, this person went and did, uh, you know, provided mentorship to a set of entrepreneurs and created great relationships with them. But it's it's hard to track that interaction to, uh, let's say, a sale or uh, an additional piece of revenue that came in this quarter, right? Um, so with that, that less accessible um, performance measurement, companies are more inclined to dismiss community, you know, like they'll, they'll invest, a company will invest in marketing all day long because they know they can put an ad on the internet and they can see how many times that ad was viewed and how many times it was clicked and how many times it turned into a customer, right? It's very, very cut and dry and very clear, but the same clarity and and transparency doesn't happen through, um, you know, someone giving a talk at a conference or someone having a conversation at a meetup or, uh, you know, all the other things that, that come around with just these human interactions and human centric approach to business. There is, there is probably a business opportunity there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been trying to crack that, crack that code for about yeah. six years. <laughs> so maybe you'll come up with a solution. So uh, I hope so. <laughs> the, um, that was one of the reasons I came to Keen because I was at an email company prior and one of the, my biggest challenges in my community facing role was getting metrics around my, our, our team's performance. And I figured, well, no better place to be than a data analytics company to uh, set myself up to actually figure this out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so community uh, is more than just developer relations, right? Yes. It's somewhere between almost, it sounds like from what you're saying, there's an aspect of, PR, there's marketing, there's these things. It's more than just developer relations. Yeah, I think for, you know, in my experience, it has largely, my personal experience, I should say, it has largely centered around developers because my prior company, the email company SendGrid and Keen, they are developer focused comp- companies because our products are APIs. And, um, you know, the very first touch point with our product is uh, through the keyboard of a developer's computer um and it's a it's less of a consumer product right now we've been building um products on top of our apis to make keen more accessible to marketers business intelligence folks uh, other people in the companies our customers companies that don't write code um but but a large part of our community strategy has centered around developers because they use our product most. However, because we're building things to make our product accessible to other people and because um, community involves people beyond your customers and your users, uh, the community strategy definitely focuses on uh, people beyond developers. So uh, whether those be just friends of the company, whether they be you know, family members of employees, whether they be partners or investors, a lot of those people aren't going to be developers, but they still are important and uh, relationships with them are still very valuable to us and we hopefully, hopefully the relationships with us are valuable to them. So um, while we might have a big focus on developers, we definitely don't uh, ignore all those who, who don't fit that mold. Right, okay. Uh, a big, big, probably the biggest... Um, tenant of our community strategy is diversity and inclusion. Um, so, you know, that's, that's part of this movement, I think, of, of companies being more human is being, having a more diverse uh, staff, having a more diverse community around them, and um, including all the people that want to be included, right? regardless of age, ethnicity, uh, gender, uh, sexual orientation, identification, like whoever it is, if they want to be a part of what we're doing, we want them to be a part of it. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's a big, big piece, you know, regardless of what you do for your job. If you're interested in building a relationship with Keen, then we're interested in building a relationship with you. Yeah. And I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, I know we got to go, but uh, just one thing related to this topic is you know we we 
uh, adopted a little puppy about three years ago, and I've learned so much about dogs and mm -hmm. the love that they provide. And I was thinking the other way, uh, the other day, the, the, the beautiful thing about dogs is that they only care about love. They don't yep. care what you look like, how tall you are, what's the color. I mean, they don't care about any of that stuff. And that's really what we want to aspire to be in that aspect, in that respect, like dogs. It's like you don't, it doesn't matter what the other person looks like. What matters is what they say and what they do. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, I've been a, as I mentioned uh, before we jumped online here, the, uh, I've been a proud, happy dog owner of, uh, well, all my life, but as an adult, <laughs> as an independent <laughs> adult, I've had my own, my own dog for the last 13 years. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's an unconditional love that I think a lot of humans and the human race could benefit from, uh, mimicking or, or, uh, um, replicating. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tim. It was, uh, fascinating as always, uh, talking with you. Uh, hope to hear more uh, news uh, about yourself and Keen and how things work out. Thanks a lot, Darius. Always awesome to, to spend time with you too. And thanks for, thanks for doing this. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Likewise. Have a awesome. great day. Thanks, man. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.